Hello and welcome. My name is Francisco, and in this video, we are going to learn the map method. We're going to use the map method to iterate through an array, extract data from each object, and then display that data in our DOM. We're going to start with an array of data. If you don't know how to use the fetch method to get data, I've recorded a video which I will link in the comments below uh, so that you may watch and uh, learn that process before uh, you can continue. So this video will assume that you've watched this video or that you know how to fetch data. To start, here we have a JavaScript file that has our function that fetches a data, then returns that data. We can go over to our HTML file. We have a simple boilerplate and a heading which says hello world. I've added that just so that we can see something in our browser to see that it's working. And then under that, I've added a division element with the ID display data. We're going to use this element to insert our HTML into our DOM. Jumping back to our scripts.js, I've created a variable called it display, and in it I've used query selector to just grab that division element we were talking about. And we'll use this later on towards this tutorial. We'll begin by creating a function that is going to get our data and then insert our data into the DOM. We'll call this function display users and we'll make it an asynchronous function because we're working with data that was returned as a promise. We'll continue with our arrow function syntax and we'll call our function because we're going to want it to fire up when our page loads. I've noticed I've kept the get data up here from the previous function. While we will need that function, we're not going to call it here. So I'm going to delete it. The first step in this function is to create a variable so that we can store our data. I'm going to call it payload and I'll use the await key because we're working with a promise. Then I will call our get data function. We can console log. Let me save to remove the console log on the right. Oh, actually, let me just remove it up here. And now I'm going to add it down here because I want you to see the data as we're fetching it. Um, it's still the same data. It's an array with the individual objects. But what we did is we took the first function and we called it within this second function. Then we stored that data in a variable. Now we can begin to iterate through this array and start extracting and displaying data. To do this, we'll use the dot map method. First, let's create a variable to store our mapped data into. I'll call it data display. Then I will take my payload and use the dot map method. Using the dot map method is quite simple. Inside the parentheses, we'll create an arrow function. And we'll use the parameter the method allows us. We'll call it object. Now, object represents each individual object as we iterate through the array. To see this, I'll save to remove the array on the right side. And I will console log object. Now, we don't have an array we see each object console logged as the dot map method iterated through our array. If I open up the first one, we'll see all the properties of the first user. Now we're going to extract information from each object and we're going to display it in our DOM. We'll deconstruct properties out of our object. In our curly brackets, simply say name, Username. Now that we've deconstructed out of our object, we can use the return key to return some HTML and our data. 
because I'm going to be combining strings and JavaScript variables, I'm going to be using template literals. In our template literals, I'll add our HTML. Now this is the HTML that you are wanting to display around whatever data it is that you're wanting to display. So this will be our container. So I'll add class container. And inside, I'll add two paragraph elements. The first one will say name. The second one will say username. To actually insert our data, we use the dollar sign and curly bracket syntax, and this will allow us to insert our JavaScript variables. So first we'll add the name, then we'll go down here to the bottom, again dollar sign curly brackets. Now we'll say username. We're not done, so we're not going to see any data in our DOM yet. And that is because we've fetched the data, we've iterated through that data, we've extracted information, and we've created the HTML to display that information, but we've yet to insert that information into our DOM. To insert our data into our DOM, we'll call the display variable. If you recall, we used query selector to grab the element that had the ID display data. And now we're going to call that variable. We'll use the inner HTML property and we'll make that equal to our data display variable, which had in it all of our information already mapped. So as I save, we'll see on the right, all of our information displayed. But also notice there is a comma separating all of these objects. And when we look over at our code, we don't see any commas. Well, that's because when we used the dot map method, it separated all of our objects. They're being returned as individual objects. And this is why we see the comma. This is an easy fix. We'll use the join method and in the parentheses, we'll add just empty quotations. And as I save, you'll see that our dot join method took our individual objects and concatenated them, creating a single object. I'd like to show you the HTML in the inspector because this is just a starting point. So here, as you see, we created a container and this container is surrounding each individual object. You can take your CSS skills and you can add styles around each individual container, creating a web page that is much neater to look at. Thank you for watching. To help support this channel and for more videos like this in the future, please hit the like button and subscribe. Catch you next time.